Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be testing the Ryzen 5 5500. It's a budget-friendly processor. We're gonna be running some benchmarks, some stress tests, and do some gaming. We're gonna see if it's still worth it in 2023. It's gonna be sicko mode. So before we start, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. It keeps me motivated to keep posting content. If you have any video ideas, please leave it in the comments below. I do read them. All right, let's get to it. So an overview of the parts that I have in this build. Obviously I have the Ryzen 5 5500 processor. I did swap out the stock Wraith Stealth cooler for the Ryzen 5 5500 with a Prism Wraith cooler from a Ryzen 7 that I had. It just makes it a little more sicko mode. The board that I'm using is a Gigabyte B450 Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. It has 16 gigs of Corsair DDR4 3200MHz RGB Vengeance RAM. I'm using a 512 gig WD Blue NVMe drive. Nothing special. The GPU I'm using is a Gigabyte AORS RTX 3060 Ti. I honestly love the way this card looks. And I think Klaus likes it too. And everything is in the Corsair 4000D Airflow ATX Mid Tower case. It's a mid-level case, it's not too high-end, it's not super low-end, it does have good airflow. So the configuration I have here comes up to a little over $1,200, and I did have to substitute some parts that were similar to what I have because PC Part Picker says some of these parts are no longer available. But if you're on a budget, you should be able to build a similar build to this for right under $850 before tax. I'm just using slightly fancier parts. Now let's talk about the processor. The AMD Ryzen 5 5500 is a six core 12 thread processor. It's still using the AM4 socket type, which means it's only compatible with DDR4 RAM. This processor can only utilize PCI Express 3.0. It's clocked at 3.6 gigahertz with a max turbo speed of 4.2 gigahertz. Its TDP is 65 watts. The processor doesn't use a lot of power, which should help keep the temps down inside of the case. So right off the bat, in 2023, this processor is already a little outdated. It only supports up to PCIe 3.0, which means if you go with a higher end SSD, like the Samsung 980 Pro, it'll bottleneck that SSD to half its potential because it's limited to PCIe 3.0 speeds that this processor is compatible with. It also uses an older AM4 socket type. There is now AM5, which means that if you buy this processor in 2023 and you want to upgrade later, you will have to upgrade your motherboard. Another thing is that it's only compatible to DDR4 RAM. And to me, it's not the biggest deal. DDR4 RAM is still perfect for gaming in 2023. So if you ever wanted to upgrade a DDR5 RAM, you will have to upgrade your motherboard and your processor. Now, if you want to take advantage of PCIe 4.0 and your motherboard supports that speed, you could just go with the Ryzen 5 5600 or the 5600X. Those do support PCIe 4.0 and their clock is faster and they're only 50 to $70 more. They both still use the AM4 socket type and don't support DDR5 RAM, but we're not reviewing those. We're reviewing the Ryzen 5 5500. Now this is a budget processor. In 2023, it's only $100. So more than likely, you're not going with really high-end SSDs that use PCIe 4.0. So it's not really a big deal there if you can't utilize those speeds. This processor is a direct competitor to the Intel i3-12100F. Most people would say this is probably the best budget gaming processor for around the $100 mark. But the Ryzen 5 has more cores and more threads, which should help if the game is a CPU heavy game. And it should help you if you ever have had to do any CPU heavy workloads. So the first test I ran was a Cinebench test. I got a score of 10,638 with a max temp of 63 degrees. I also ran it with the i3-12100F that I have and I got a score of 7,907 with a max temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. Just like I thought, with it having more cores and more threads, it did score better than the i3 and it did stay cooler, which is nice to see. Now the next test I ran was the Furmark test which puts 100% load on the CPU as well as the GPU. My temp was 68 degrees Celsius on the Ryzen 5. The i3-12100F reached 73 degrees Celsius, which isn't bad, but it's not as good as 68 degrees. The CPU temp for the Ryzen 5 was really good, but the GPU temp at 85 degrees is not so good. I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that it's vertically mounted and it's on a riser. When I run the test, I do have the glass on it, so the case is closed, but what I'm noticing is that whenever I have the glass on it, the GPU is right up against it, which doesn't give it a lot of breathing room. I even turned up the fans to max speed in the front that are intakes, and I didn't see an improvement in in uh, temps. I'll keep an eye on that because 
That temp is not good. That's a very high temp. So I did run two 3D Mark tests. I ran Firestrike Extreme and Time Spy. The scores I got were 13,254 for Firestrike Extreme. My average temp was 47 degrees Celsius. So when you compare it to the i3-12100F, they're actually neck and neck. 13,547 versus 13,254 on the Ryzen 5. The physics test is a CPU benchmark. The Ryzen 5 actually did 27% better, which is actually really good. But those are the scores. And when you look at time spy, I got 10,873. Average temperature was 49 degrees Celsius. And I don't have anything to compare it to. For some reason, I don't have the 12100F score with this one. So I am running the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark test. I am running at ultra settings. So everything is turned up to the max at 1440p. And still, my GPU temps, they're not the greatest. So one thing I'm noticing during the test is the GPU is hitting high temps again. It's 82 degrees right now. My FPS is pretty good. So at max settings at 1440p, my average FPS was at 139 FPS, which for a mid-level build is actually really good. If you want the game to be an enjoyable experience, you want at least 60 FPS. So at 139, it's actually really good, especially for a budget processor. The 3060 Ti, I wouldn't say is a budget GPU, but it's also not the highest end GPU. And right now while I'm running this game, my GPU temp is at 92 degrees, which I think something's going on because that's not normal. I'm thinking it's because it's vertically mounted. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play GTA 5, I'm gonna play Cyberpunk. I'm going to see what kind of temps I get on the GPU. I know we're mainly talking about the Ryzen 5 5500, but I'm concerned that the GPU is heating up too much. If temps continue to stay high, I'll change the configuration on the GPU rather than have the GPU vertically mounted. I'll just plug it into the motherboard directly. All right, so for the Cyberpunk benchmark, I turned everything up to high. I even turned everything to psycho with ray tracing on, so that means it's fully maxed out. Honestly, my FPS wasn't that great. Right now I'm seeing my FPS in the 30s. So fully maxed out, my average FPS on Cyberpunk at ultra settings, I guess I should say ultra and psycho settings, my average FPS was 35 FPS, which honestly isn't good. You want closer to 60. I wouldn't say the game is super playable at these settings. So I did run this benchmark test again at the lowest settings. I turned everything down. They don't have like a low psycho version. They have like ultra and then psycho, but they don't have low and then like ultra low psycho. Right now my FPS is above 60. GPU temp is about the same 79 degrees. With the lowest settings and ray tracing off, my average FPS was 86 frames per second which is much more playable. This just goes to show that Cyberpunk is a very demanding game. With this configuration with the Ryzen 5500 and the 3060 Ti, it is definitely playable, just at lower settings. It is nice to know that the $100 CPU does exceed the minimum requirements for Cyberpunk. I believe it even exceeds the recommended requirements. Yes, it does. The Ryzen 3 3200G, it definitely exceeds it. So now let's move on to GTA 5. So I started playing GTA 5 at max settings. 1440p. If you look at my GPU temp right now, I'm hitting 87 degrees, 88 degrees Celsius. Not good at all. I'm beginning to think it's the vertically mounted configuration that's causing that. So FPS is hovering in the 50s and 60s. So it's playable. So my GPU is at 92 degrees. My FPS is in the 50s. That is just not good. Hmm, that is concerning. My CPU was at 45 degrees. Let me change that configuration because that's just not that GPU shouldn't be hitting those temps. All right, so I am running GTA again with the GPU not vertically mounted. And I'm running decently high settings, not max settings, just decently high. This is the configuration I was able to get a little over 60 frames per second average. The only difference I see is that my GPU temp is at 53 degrees versus the high 80s. I'm still hovering in the 60s and 70s. So that's pretty much the same. So overall, the CPU is definitely able to handle pretty much every game. If it can handle Cyberpunk, even though it was at the lowest settings, it was still playable and it still looks good at 1440p. GTA 5 is like 10 years old now. This processor is more than capable of handling this at almost the highest settings. Now that could be also the GPU. If you paired it with maybe a 3070 or a 3080, you should be able to play at the highest settings and get over 60 frames per second. So what's the verdict? 
Is the Ryzen 5 5500 processor worth it in 2023? Definitely yes. Despite the fact that it lacks support for PCIe 4.0 and only supports DDR4 RAM and uses an older AM4 socket type, this processor can still play any game out today. Cyberpunk is one of the most demanding games, and even though we play it at the lowest settings to get over 60 frames per second, the game still looks pretty good. Now you could pair the CPU with a more powerful GPU, but typically when you're spending $100 on a CPU, it's because you're on a budget, and the 3060 Ti is already on the edge of not being a budget-friendly GPU, but nowadays with GPU prices, it kind of is, kind of. Now, if you're strictly gaming and that's all you plan on doing, you could go with the i3-12100F. It does outperform the Ryzen 5 5500. However, I personally like to have a processor that is a better all-around processor with more cores, more threads, just in case I need to do heavier CPU workloads. Like I said, to me, when you spend $100 on the CPU, it doesn't make sense to spend $700, $800, even $1,200 on a GPU. Let me know what your thoughts are. Should I have paired this CPU with a better GPU than the 3060 Ti? Another thing we learned today is do not vertically mount your GPU in the Corsair Airflow 4000D case. Now when it is vertically mounted, especially if your GPU has RGB fans, it does look pretty sicko mode. At least with this particular 3060 Ti, it is a thick boy for being a dual slot card and it just didn't have enough clearance between the glass and the fans to allow the GPU to breathe. So it was essentially suffocating it. And I could see that with my temps being so high as well as my FPS dropping. But I think that's it. Right Klaus? The Ryzen 5 5500 is definitely worth it in 2023. Once again, please like and subscribe if you like this content. It really helps me out. If you have any video ideas, let me know in the comments. And hope you have a sickle mode day.